What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3 and we're coming straight back into the Biobot setup and production. Before we move on to that, please don't forget to subscribe to find all my other videos and future ones to come. Okay, so it's reasonably simple for a Biobot. You need two things. You need steel and you need zombie spores. The zombie spores have to be put into the machine through a gas. The best one I've found so far is carbon dioxide it just seemed to resonate throughout the internet as well so you have to put them in on the port the in port which obviously of course is the white one and they are expelled on the green port as normal now you do need a full cycle or they will of course block up and it is very important to note that the exhaust is not clean from germs so it does not use 100% of the germs you pump in. So if you are pumping in zombie spores, or when you're pumping in zombie spores, sorry, you will be getting them on the exhaust as well. So if you're putting that into your base or anywhere near your base or somewhere where your duplicates go, that's bad. Now for me to start with, I'm just going to drop it up top there. You can see, luckily I have a chlorine out, chlorine area. So I'm just going to dump it into the chlorine area. Of course, we all know chlorine kills everything. So the zombie spores will obviously go into there and be killed and it will be safe. Now in the future, my aim is just to recycle the same gas. Whether I kill off the zombie spores or not, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, personally. Because I'm not going to be using the, the carbon dioxide as a gas for the duplicates anyway. So I don't think it will matter. So just putting it into a tank and then out of the tank into the room of zombie plants. So my first setup is as so, and of course at the time of doing this, I wasn't 100% aware of how to grow them, although I knew you could grow them. It does say farming plot in the description under the uh, encyclopedia that's in the game, but that is not the case. So it's not the hydroponics, it's not the farming plot, it is actually flower pots or the three variants of the standard flower pot, the bench pot and the hanging pot, all of which you can grow the spore, uh, zombie spore plants in. So we'll jump over to that because I wasted a lot of time trying to find them here. And there we go. So I've only got two at the minute. They're the two that you get free in the room. So with every single room with the story trait that you get this room, there is a little locker in there with a hazard symbol on it. And you get two seeds. So I can plant them. Um, there are a lot around the map. To the left-hand side of the map, there is at least five or six more. So I will go and collect those. It does seem that the zombie spores don't seem to get stuck to the Atmo suits, nor does it affect them while they're in their Atmo suits, which, of course, makes sense. Because they're not breathing from the outside in an Atmo suit. So the fact that our whole base is now set up, that everything outside is in some form of Atmo suit, whether it be left or the right-hand side, is actually proving to be very, very useful here. If your duplicates get infected with the zombie spores, there is only one solution to that. Well, actually, the, 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 the obvious is death. Two solutions, death, or you need to use the uh, vials, the syringe vials that you make using steel and sun bug eggs in the apothecary and then administered in the top tier hospital with the top tier doctor that is the only thing that cures it i think you get about four to five cycles to do that though it is quite cute to see the guy um the, the little zombie guy spore thing grow as you put the spores in from a dot to a little octopus looking thing with a massive eyeball reminds me of the old-fashioned tamagotchis though you can't control it it just does what it does they are not permanent they last for a certain amount of time, like the, the the rover bots with energy, and then they die off. Though when they die off, they automatically go into deconstruction mode, and you get the steel back. And then all you need to do is apply more zombie spores and rinse and repeat. They are pretty useful as janitors. They are quite slow, and they can't carry anywhere near as much as your duplicates. But to be honest, as does the internet say, and I have found out now in the future playing this, if you just set it up and leave it alone, as long as you can keep your steel up and you don't have problems with steel, uh, you'll find that they'll just appear and be very useful. I seem to have, I think by the time I'm recording this, I'm quite a far ahead, uh, six or seven running around the base and they are always about doing things they don't need to sleep or anything so while your guys are asleep they are doing tasks they're also 
immune to pretty much everything so you can send them into really really dangerous climates uh, locking the doors for your duplicates they will still go through it's about the only way i've figured out how to control them so far you are supposed to be able to send them on ships to other asteroids and planets though i haven't figured out how to do that yet and if you do know please let everyone know So still getting in the gas pipes now to get some carbon dioxide down into that room. Obviously the other spore cichlid things are still to be dug out. They are trapped on purpose because I do not want the zombie spores getting out into this mass of gas. But also all of this up to the abyssalite needs to be dug out anyway. I want to dig out everything up to the borders. And this left hand side the border is going to be the abyssalite because I'm not getting involved in digging out that much magma. There is obviously the neodymium stuff. I think that's a magnet. But anyway, beyond it, down at the bottom, it is just the neo stuff. And I haven't got to the far right yet. The top is... Well, the top. Now, again, as we said, or as I said from the very beginning, I'm not sure the orientation is a bit on the wonk for this map. But going to the top does allow you to launch your rockets and build out there. Though it isn't as as neat as what you're used to with the other ones the lab map though is definitely my new favorite and i will be using this more in the future unless you guys don't like it the size just makes it great for doing mega bases without having to fly all over the place which to be fair are what the other maps are for the spaced out ones are for flying and doing a lot of rockets we are going to of course do rockets and in fact I already am in the process of building one. Spoiler alert. If you want to see anything like that though, spoilers, they are on the Discord channel. So please don't forget to have a look there and join us in some communications. Yes, I already said communications. I don't know why I said communications because it just sounds cringe. Anyway, just get in... Um, a broad idea anyway of where I want to dig out as the duplicates come over they'll uncover that area I'm gonna tackle side by side so the left hand side then the bottom then the right doing it all is too much this map is huge they are massive I'm loving 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 it but it's for 24 25 duplicates it's far too big um, we do have still over 4 million calories of food, so realistically that just tells me that yes, I can indeed have a lot more duplicates. Almost. There is still the main issue, which is literally the name of the game, and that is oxygen. So we can feed many more duplicates we have space for many more duplicates but can we let them breathe comfortably now with the liquids that are coming into this game so far i would say yes i uh, have seen a comment regarding the hydrogen being uh, clean and uh, the fight against the heat which is a very good way of saying it and yes as agreed with the comment uh, that is the case and we are going to have a lot of Spear hydrogen using electrolysis with all these liquids that we do have. However, there is a caveat to that, and that is that the actual heat isn't really a negative in this playthrough. Because of the generators that we're using, uh, the heat is actually giving us free power to a point. So you could argue both ways. Now, of course, I'm going to use hydrogen for power as soon as we can for the simple fact that it is clean and free in terms of uh, off gases it's just it's just the, the cleanest best way to go and we're gonna have a lot of it our first rocket will be petroleum based as you've seen we've already got well into that process and progress of petroleum though unfortunately only the small petroleum engine will be uh, starting with and that is still significant. It gives us 20 tiles to build a rocket, which is more than I think we need. Uh, the first rocket I'll build will likely be to get some new critters over here. To get the ranching up there, because I do like the ranching side of it, though it is getting a bit complex. So back to the room now. I'm just putting in some automations specifically to bring the pressure down. I've used a high pressure vent 
uh, but the flowers can't stand 20 kilos of pressure. That is far too much. So I need to reduce that. Also, I'm going to do the same with germs. I mean, I'm going to use the automated counter for the germs. There is one. Um, and set it to do a specific amount. Now, I have done a bit of science on this. And unless someone tells me that it's different, I can share what I've done. But the amount of germs in the carbon dioxide as it's sucked up does matter. So in a test environment, I did... Basically a thousand germs per square uh, and the squares were running at about six kilos of carbon dioxide and a thousand germs per and the percentage went up reasonably slow. I then edited it and gave each of the squares 50 million I think it was germs per square and it went up significantly faster. So the amount of germs within the gases does matter. Though, when the gas is in a pipe, it doesn't show it. So, what I'm going to do is just set the pump to turn on when a specific number of germs hits, which I would say about 50,000 is, is a good amount. It works for me. And we'll go from there. Efficiency-wise, if anybody's got any other comments or science on that, please do let me know. Okay, a few cycles later, and you can see I've increased the size as well, ripping out those on the left. That whole left-hand side now is ripped out up to that abyssal, as I said. And you can see we're about to get a an additional, sorry, biobot. Looking at about 90%. Just checking the numbers. There is the germ counter in there. There is a pressure gauge as well. A high pressure vent because the plants can stand up to 10 kilos. Though setting the vent at 10 kilos doesn't work very well because it lets in too much too quickly. So I've dropped it down to about 6 or 7 kilos and that seems to be keeping it okay. At the minute you can see that there is no gas in there. So they are all gassed out. I need to get that in the room. With no atmosphere or too much atmosphere, of course, the plants show dead as they are. Don't worry, though, as soon as the temperatures and gases and get everything meets the requirements, they will just come back to life again. You don't have to grow them from scratch, of course. So with that turning on, the vent should open. There it goes, and boom. And immediately they are throwing out those zombie spores. That gas... Now, the carbon dioxide that is in that room is now full of them spores and will continue to grow constantly. Uh, I've seen it, at I've tried it with hundreds of millions in a test world and it still continues to rise. So, you can see them all there and then they are above as well in the room where it exhausts too. As I said, it's not totally clean when it exhausts, so be warned. Um, but we'll see, of course, the last few. Now, this is currently set on 25,000 germs per square. And it's only measuring the square that's in. So you can see them fluctuating quite significantly. But as soon as that hits, it will then pump that gas in. And 25,000 is where I start. But 50,000 has been the most efficient so far. In terms of time and speed, anyway. Just while we wait for the germs to count up. On this area, it's proving... Uh, stranger danger basically it's working but it's slow and it's causing more hassle than it's worth I am likely just to pop the cap on the whole building and let it release itself and cool down that way everybody's got atmos suits on so it's safe all around these guys are coming in now to do I have no idea what I'm not sure if they were just admiring the flowers there to be honest there didn't seem to be any useful know-how and there we go, with the count triggered, the gas is pumped in, the counter will continue to count up. You can see the little spores throwing on the little bio bot guy there, the bio guy, whatever you want to call him. Little three-legged octopus with a closed eye at the minute. And of course, it doesn't take too much to finish him off, and there we go. So he's now completed with his big eyeball, that is his final stage. We now need the doctor. So a doctor will have to come in and transport the, the the little gremlin thing. Peggy is what it's actually called. So transport Peggy over to that additional test tube there on the top left where the pipe is. And then that is then transported into the steel carcass that was made a while back. And it just starts all over again. So let's just jump over to see which doctor we're going to get over here. 
ASAP. Dr. Harold and Dr. Joshua are the options. It looks like Dr. Joshua is on his way. So here we go. This is what we've been waiting for. And this is what the episode is about. So let's see our first biobot ever be released into the world. So pumps him up there through the pipe into the machine. The capsule then gets placed in. And there we go. First Peggy of the series. And actually the first Peggy of me ever playing this game. And now they will continue to do whatever they can constantly without resting at all. They don't require anything at all. And they can go into every environment without suffering. If you want to pause and read all of this, you're more than welcome to. Um, of course, they do get to the stage where they run out of power. Usually, it seems that it's about four or five cycles, give or take. They then shut down and automatically get an order to be deconstructed. I'm assuming the octopus thing just goes to the oxygen not included in heaven. And the carcass, the steel carcass, we get the steel back. That goes then back into the production and rinse and repeat. The only way to increase this efficiency then is to have a much, much higher count of the spores to increase the production. Because the production is gated by how quick you can get them spores into this process. The steel, of course, is easily manageable um, based on your setup. So although we've achieved that and we've now got biobot or bots going to be appearing around the base in the future, uh, it's a bit too early to end, so I'm going to move over to another project that I'm working on. And as you can see what that is, it is another electrolysis room. So the top one is and continues to be only for the Atmo suits. So then two pumps there and all of the oxygen produced there is going to the Atmo suits. The hydrogen uh, is going into storage and we'll use that lightly for power later. Maybe we'll use that for fuel later, i.e. cryogenics fuel. But getting hydrogen cold enough to do that, I am not sure I've ever done that before. In fact, I know I haven't. I have tried, but never succeeded. So we may go to that depending on how long this series goes and that is all depending on you guys so let me know if you want to see things like that and i'll of course make it happen if it don't then i'll just go into a new series this bottom one which is much better kitted out it has a lot more electrolysis machines built in is going to be for the base there is three pipes coming out of here though i believe i actually only end up using two um but the idea here is that the restrictions on the gas pipes is fixed. There's nothing you can do about that. So to get more oxygen into the base and more oxygen or any gases actually, any gases moved quicker, you need more pipes. So all I'm going to do here is pull these over and get the oxygen in directly into the base. The hydrogen, of course, the same as before, will be stored directly in the storage facility. Now, yes... I think I'm about to realise that I've gone f far too far to the right here. These are supposed to be going up the centre of the main base. Uh, the main base is to the left of those tanks, I'm sure. Or am I totally wrong? Yeah, there. Yeah, I've gone f way too far. This here is where I need to turn. So, yes, all of this can be ripped out. And there we go. All I'm going to do really is... I'm using the lower vents so that they are restricted automatically. And by restricted, I mean... They won't allow you to put more than about two kilos of any pressured gas in at any one time, which is more than enough. Uh, sort of 1,500 grams, one and a half kilos is comfortable for your duplicates. Um, and then if it does back up, I'll put a tank in the way. For now, though, we still need to, of course, set all of this up. And it's a straightforward system that I've used many, many times before. So the floor of the electrolyzers is a gas through floor that allows the gas to drop. The hydrogen go up, the oxygen goes down. And I'm going to steal the water from our main water system. You can see we have got a lot of clean water. But pulling it from there, if you've noticed, I'm pulling that out of the exit of the fourth tank. So that means that we will use the water, the clean water, to produce oxygen up until that fourth tank. But tanks one, two, and three, which they hold 100,000 each, so that's 300,000 litres of water, will never be used for this. And we'll always have 300,000 litres of water spare. Though, of course, 
we'll have that water spare, but we won't make an oxygen if we get to that stage. At the minute, though, liquid, water, we've got coming out of our ears, so I'm not worried, which is why I've gone for such a strong system here. And yes, you can see the tanks at the bottom with an AND gate, two of the sensors looking for oxygen going into the AND gate. If both of them sensors see oxygen on them two tiles up, they will trigger the pumps, three pumps to pump the oxygen. If the two top ones go through the AND gate and get AND as well on hydrogen, the two tanks, sorry, pumps at the top will pump the hydrogen. I'll always put a loop in for the hydrogen because it is, it can be a little bit messy doing it this way for the hydrogen, not so much the oxygen, uh, where you get the odd bit of oxygen loose in there. So just put a filter in and take that back out and put it into the oxygen pipe. Nice and simple. Just require a lot of power. Um, the pumps are 240 each. The electrolyzers are 120 each. You can see I'm actually counting there to figure out what is X times 120 plus 5 times 240 because that's how much power I'm going to need. And it is very likely and in fact definite that I'm going to need to bring down here the main power grid and put a transformer in specifically for this room. It's not a power spine on this side. I'm just doing it as and when I need to. Um, in the future, do I want to go for two power spines? I don't know, actually. I like the idea of the power spine, but multiple power spines. Yeah, unless... I don't know. Maybe there's a mod that gives us an even more powerful, like, four kilowatt cable. That would make the one power spine work. Spline? It's a spine. Anyway. So bringing that down, the heavy watt cable, to get us to another platform there, where you can see I've already put it in. Voila. And that is specifically for two kilowatts for this room solely. And hopefully that's enough. If we go above it, 2.2, 2.3, it's usually okay. Uh, but when you get to 2.4 kilowatts or more, you will start to see damage. Now, the damage is always on the jumps first. So the bridges that you see always get damaged before the cable, in my experience. So if you use a lot of bridges you'll probably find you'll have to stick close to the two kilowatt limit or one kilowatt limit if you're using the standard cable still but that is a whole lot of information and information that is now over time so we'll see what this looks like for the next episode thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments are welcome as always please do subscribe for more take care goodbye